It's time to start the service for Brother Daryl Smith. The casket will be closed. Our founder, Reverend Clay Evans, usually when he would start a homegoing celebration, he would start by singing, I will be done. It's kind of hard sometimes when somebody young leaves. I shared with the mama, I said, sweetheart, I I lost my son this year, so I share your pain. But we're going to still say thy will be done. So as we're saying our final goodbye, will you help me give a hand of praise for Mr. President? Can you help me do that? Come on, come on, you can do better than that. Stand on your feet, stand on your feet. We're giving Mr. President a hand of praise. We're thanking God for the few years that God blessed us with him. Mr. President, my God, my God. I've heard nothing but good things about him. Young man that helps so many people. One lady said while she was standing at the casket, he's supposed to be in the White House by now. But mama, thy will be done. Amen, amen. As we start the service, Miss Yvette Ford will come to bring us a song. The Old Testament scripture will be read by Deacon Willie States. The New Testament scripture will be read by Deacon Johnny Johnson. We will have prayer by Reverend Jonathan Brooks, who's a pastor of Longdale Christian Community Church. Can everyone say amen? Amen and amen. time when we need the Lord's strength. Anybody need the Lord's strength? The song says, you are my strength. It says, you are my strength, strength like no other, strength like no other, and it reaches Red. 
it for you. Strength like no other. And it reaches to me. You are, you are my home, God. When I can't hope, you are my home like no other. Home like no other. And it reaches to me. And it reaches to me. And it reaches to the high, highest mountain. Anybody know that the blood, it will do it for you. And it flows to the lowest valley. Yeah. Oh, it was the blood. It was the blood that gave me strength from death. The Lord is my shepherd to feed, to guide, and to shield me. I shall not want. He lets me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still and quiet waters. He refreshes and restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the sinless valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort and console me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You have anointed and refreshed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy and unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell forever in the house and in the presence of the Lord. May God add a blessing to the reading of the word. Good morning, family, to all these young people here this morning. John 3.16's message, I think, will touch your hearts. It said that for God loved the world so much that he gave his only one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Christ in our lives makes a difference. God sent his son into the world not to judge the world, but to save you and the world. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing and the doers of his word.
God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. So honored to have the opportunity to stand here. I've been graciously walking with this amazing family, this Williams family, for 20 plus years. And I look out at some of y'all and how grown you are. And I'm glad I ain't getting no older. But before um, we go to the Lord in prayer, I just, I just wanted to set the tone for the prayer. And the first thing I want you to recognize is that on the front of this beautiful, beautiful obituary that's so fitting of somebody like there, I want you to notice that the top words, there's one word that's not used at all. It says the life and the legacy of Daryl Antoine Smith Jr. Notice there's a word that's not there. And that's the word death. And that's because we don't gather here today because Daryl died, y'all. We gather here today because of how he lived. He brought us all together in the ways that he lived. And I, I want to give you one quick example. I'm going to pray and get out your way. Um, I had the opportunity to write in a book called Making Neighborhoods Whole, which the philosophy that Canaan, the church that many of you know, where Pastor Chris is the pastor now and where I was a pastor for many years, um, we practice a philosophy called Christian community development. And one of those tenets is called relocation. And they asked me to write relocation. Why did I decide that when I pastored in Inglewood, in West Inglewood, I was going to live in West Inglewood, just blocks away from all my parishioners? And there was no better person to think of in that moment then, well, at that time, I was saying they're fat, fat. And my little title of the chapter, and I'm just going to read a couple sentences, says, I'm here because you're here. It says this, a kid named Daryl once asked me, Jay, you could be rich now. How come you still working in the hood? I looked back at Daryl and I said, Daryl, I don't really want to be rich. I'm here because you're here. Daryl looked at me with that smile and he said, that's a good reason to stay. Exchanges such as this inspire me to show other young people that success is not defined by escape from our communities, but becoming leaders and investing in our communities. That's Daryl, that's Fat Fat, the person who inspires us all to be better. So as I pray, I want us to remember who he was and let's thank God for the life that we have and the time that we had with him. Let's pray together. Dear and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to stand here and to sit here today, not because we've lost someone who's been so important in our lives, but because we gained such an important part of our lives for 23 years. God, thank you for the way that he loved. Thank you for that amazing smile. Thank you for his encouraging spirit. Thank you for the fact that he was going to tell us what to do, whether we wanted to do it or not. Thank you, God, that he was like the president of the family. Thank you, God, that whenever we needed to know and what was going on, we could just turn to Daryl because he knew everything that was going on on the block. Thank you for his life. Thank you for the fact that he was such a star student. The way he showed him how it should be done at Henderson, the way he showed him how it should be done at Urban Prep. Thank you for his life. Thank you for his dreams, his aspirations, and his goals. Thank you for the way that he showed his younger cousins and siblings that you can do anything you put your mind to. God, we gather here today to celebrate his life and legacy. And in those moments when it gets difficult, God, because tears will flow, pain will erupt, we will miss his presence. Remind us that Revelation chapter 21 verse 4 promises one day you will wipe all tears from our eyes. But until that day, may we hold tight to the comfort that comes from you. God, we pray for Alicia, we pray for Daryl. We pray for the entire Williams family. We just ask God that you would wrap them in your arms, that you would comfort them in ways that only you can. And God, that the peace of the Lord would surpass all understanding. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus and all God's people who agree. 
Say amen. amen. God bless you. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. We will have resolution now by Miss Barbara Seals, followed by remarks, Reverend Christopher Farrell. He's a pastor of Canaan Baptist Church. Then we'll have remarks by Miss Nutley. Followed by her, we will have special remarks by Mr. Dennis Lacewell from the Urban Prep Academy. Followed by that, tribute from the family, Miss Lockett, Mr. Williams. Those of you who will be speaking other than uh, Reverend here will use the mic down um, at the bottom of the stairs. Thank you so much. Can we say amen? amen? Amen. Good morning. I would like to acknowledge resolution from Universal Hagar Spiritual Church Association, Gary, Indiana, Reverend Ora K. Holliday, Senior Pastor. Resolution, Chicago, Illinois, Friday, October 14th, 2022. The pastor, administrative staff, officers, and members of the Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church take this time to express our love to our member, Beverly Johnson, and the entire family of Daryl, I'm sorry, Daryl Smith Jr., our member. Let's travel back in time Let's go back to the beginning. Genesis 1-1 says, in the beginning, God created. God created Daryl Johnson Jr. 23 years ago in his image and likeness with a plan and purpose for his life. Daryl traveled the path that God set him on. Life's journey is not always easy. It has its ups and downs, it has its highs and lows, the good and bad, the sun and storms, and the unexpected. But if we just hold on and hold out, we can make the journey with God's help. There is an ancient African folk tale that reaffirms a very powerful truth. The tale explains that an eagle knows when a storm is about to approach. Long before the storm breaks, the eagle will fly to a high spot and wait for the winds to come. When the storm hits, the bird sets its wings so that the wind will pick it up and lift it high above the storm. While the storm rages below, the eagle is soaring above. The eagle does not escape the storm, it simply uses the storm to lift it higher. The bird rides on the winds that swings, brings the storm. During this storm that you are facing, know that you can rise above this storm. Keep your heads to the sky. Set your minds and your belief towards God. The storms do not have to overcome you. Allow God's power to lift you above them God will enable you to ride the winds of the storms that bring sickness, tragedy, disappointment, and death your way. You can soar above the storm. As you leave this service today, be assured that we love you, we are praying for you, and we are here for you. Lovingly submitted by the Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church, the late Reverend Dr. Clay Evans founder, Charles Jenkins, Pastor Emeritus, Reginald Wayne Sharp, Jr., Senior Pastor. This is hard, <laughs> be honest. The one, of the one of the things that I, as I'm now a pastor of Canaan Community Church, one of the, one of the things that I, I can always say is have knowing them for the amount of time in which I've known them that I, I I don't think I ever get to be where I am now without them. I remember I started, uh, I was a program director of the Diamond Academy, a lot of people from the Diamond Academy are here, and I remember it, it was an after school program, 
that we had and, and Henderson, student from Henderson came from there. And I was young, man. I was, I was just like fresh. I think I was like 22, 22 years old. And, and I had no clue, no clue at all what I was doing, how I would do it. We was playing football and snow, all the stuff that's like illegal now. You know, we <laughs> breaking all types of rules. But one thing I remember is I, I was always excited to be there. And the reason why is because no matter what time I got there, no matter what time I got there, Daryl always beat me. I don't know how, I'm like, ain't y'all still in school? Like he would be at the door I would drive up and he would run to the car, he's like, you late. I'm like, we don't start for two hours, like you late. And, and, and then he say, cause I had a Sebring, can I drive your car? Like you can't drive like this, he was asking this, he was like seven years old, like telling me I'm late, can I drive? And he always wanted the pleasure of opening the door. But the thing, <laughs> always, let me open the door, but he would help, he would give the shirt off his back, he would help. But the funny thing is, is that as great as his smile was, the nickname I gave him was Angry Face. <laughs> angry Face. When he was a kid, he used to always and be real angry. And he's like, you ain't scared nobody, go sit down. But, but Daryl uh, truly, along with his whole family, truly changed my whole life, the trajectory. Who knows where I would have been if it hadn't been for me turning the corner and seeing him always standing right in front of the, right in front of Diamond Academy with a smiling face. So that's something I'll never forget. And just don't ever, Stop living, and that's what he taught me. Oh, he's been more places than I've ever been. He's been in Jamaica. I'm looking fa following on Facebook, je kind of jealous, honestly. <laughs> but Daryl definitely lived his life, as he said before, so that's something that, as he changed my life, I hope he did the same for everybody else. That's all I got. First, I just want to give my honor to God and tell everyone thank you from our family to yours. Um, I was the only one who was brave enough to come up here, even though I'm not that brave either. But on behalf of me and all of my cousins, um, I just wanted to write a letter to him. So to President Smith, Lil D, Fat Fat, Growing up, you were always beyond your years, as so many people <laughs> have mentioned. Whether it was taking people's car keys to drive, drive, yeah. Um, or remembering everybody's phone numbers or social security numbers by the age of 10. Because, baby, he knew my, mom, my parents' numbers before I did. Um, you made sure your mother, brother, grandmothers, aunties, uncles, cousins, friends, whoever, were always taken care of. Whether it was taking Auntie Nancy to the grocery store, going, gro going um, school shopping for your brother's school clothes, or taking the kids to Chuck E. Cheese. You were always there. You always acted like you were Alicia's husband <laughs> and were a positive role model to all of your brothers. You made sure you took care of all the kids in the family and they adored you. They're going to miss you so much because you spoiled them. You don't even know how the love, how your love healed us. The love you have for your family was unmatched. You were the life of the party. You shined a light that everyone could see. The best word to describe you was selfless. Whether it was going up the extra mile for someone you just met or being the rock for all of us, we can count on you no matter what, no matter how far you were or what you had going on, we always knew you'd find a way to make it to every birthday party, every graduation, and every family gathering, big or small. We're going to miss you so much, President Smith, but we know heaven couldn't wait for you. We gained an angel. You, you left us way too soon, and it made such an impact on all of our lives, um, but we appreciate the time we have with you. Please watch over us. We love you, D, and see you soon. Mm -hmm. 
Mr. Lace well. Okay, thank you. Say amen for him. Amen. amen. Good morning, I'm Dennis Lacewell, Chief Academic Officer for Urban Prep Academies. I was Mr. Smith's principal uh, during his freshman and sophomore year at Urban Prep Inglewood. As has already been stated, you know, during these times, uh, heaven gains an angel, and he's definitely gained an angel uh, with Mr. Smith as we use our surnames to address each other. And I just want to remind us of uh, 2 Corinthians fifth chapter, for we know that when this earthly tent we live in is taken down, that is when we die and leave this earthly body, we will have a house in heaven, an eternal body made for us by God himself and not human hands. We grow weary in our present bodies and we long to put on heavenly bodies like new clothing, for we will put on heavenly bodies, we will not be spirits without bodies. While we live in these earthly bodies, we groan inside, but it's not that we want to die and get rid of these bodies that close, close us. Rather, we want to put on our new bodies so that these dying bodies will be swallowed up by life and God himself has prepared for us and as a guarantee has given us the Holy Spirit. So I want to read this resolution in the memory of Mr. Smith. We, the faculty, staff, and students of Urban Prep Academies want the family to know that our hearts are with you as we gather to bid Goodbye to Mr. Darrell A. Smith, Urban Prep Inglewood Campus, proud of relentlessness, class of 2017. Whereas Mr. Smith's untimely passing will leave a painful vacancy in the hearts of those who, whose lives he's touched, we stand with the family and extend our heartfelt sympathies in this and their time for sorrow. Whereas while we will mourn the loss of Mr. Smith, we are consoled by the memory of this Urban Prep young man known for his loyalty and kind spirit. Whereas while Mr. Smith is no longer with us physically, we know he will live on in the histories of Urban Prep and in the memories of the Urban Prep family. Therefore, let it be resolved that we embrace the family to show our love and support as we say goodbye to their beloved and our beloved Darrell A. Smith Jr. Be it further resolved that we pledge to honor Darrell Smith's memory by continuing our critical work with young, intelligent, black and beautiful men in the city of Chicago. Humbly submitted on this 14th day of October, 2022, the Urban Prep Academy's family. Thank you. Ms. Lockett. Who would have known that morning? I love you too, cousin. Who would have known that morning God was going to call your name? In life, we loved you dearly. In death, we do the same. It broke our hearts to lose you. You did not go alone. For part of us went with you the day that God called you home. You left us peaceful memories. Your love is still our God. And, through, and though we cannot see you, you are always at our side. Our family chain is broken and nothing seems the same, but as God calls us one by one, the chain will link again. Love always dead. Lil D was my first grandchild. He was smart, intelligent, and a little bit of crazy, but I loved him no matter what. He cared about everyone and would do anything to help anyone. I will always, I will miss my grandson, save me a spot in heaven with all my loved ones. Love, Grandpa Bones. My hero, no one understood the bond you and I shared as brothers. Anytime I was down to my lowest or, or, or upset, you came to help with me, help me with all my problems, no matter what. I'm so damaged. I don't think I'll ever accept the fact that this is real, that God took you away from us. 
you were the big brother to me, more like a father figure. If I needed your spine, you would have give, you would have gave it with me, gave it with me. I love you with all my heart. I will never be the same. Love your brother Daquan. A letter to my cousin in heaven. Dear Fefe, LOL. It feels good to say Fefe without you telling me we're grown now. Stop calling me that. I love you more than words can express. You broke my heart, but I'm glad you're getting your, your rest. I thought as time went by, this would get easier, but honestly, it's not. I'm really just finding joy and knowing that your love life, that you love life and most importantly, God. I'm so glad I got to experience life with you as one of your favorite cousins. I'm glad I have memories of us to last a lifetime. So my tears won't always be sad ones, but tears of joy reminiscent on the past. Save me a seat on the swing next to you in heaven and try not to start any fights up there. <laughs> I love you, my favorite cousin. I'll carry you on my heart forever until we meet again. Love D, love Kiara. D, meeting you has truly been one of the best experiences in my life. We instantly click and have been inseparable since. I thank God for bringing someone so pure, genuine, and loving into my life. He knew I needed a bond like that. I just wish we had more time. Thank you for everything you have done for me, and thank you for always being the big brother I wanted. The love you have shown these past four years has never gone unnoticed. This is a pain I wasn't ready to encounter, but I know God got you now, so I'm okay with that. I love you so much. You can finally get your rest. Love your sister, Q. For my nephew in heaven, I don't know which, one, which way to turn or what to do. You are my secretary. You handle everything for me. When I called, you came running. Sometimes I didn't even have to call. You were already there. You are my protector. Did, you did everything. I mean, anything for me. You were our walking angel on earth. I will always cherish our many conversations, car rides, listening to our old school music, hugs, the telling each other I love you every day. Get your rest, handsome angel. I love you now, forever, always, and after. Love your fave auntie, Dominique. To my favorite cousin, Lil D, I never thought your journey on this thing called life would end so soon. As long as I can remember, you are, you've always been around. We couldn't stand each other. <laughs> When we were little, when we were little kids, but somehow it always seemed to be you, me, and Apple. You, we were the three best friends that anyone can have. I'm going to miss your presence. I'm going to miss you, miss our morning calls and asking who all on this phone. <laughs> I'm definitely going to miss us going out and taking vacations. It's not going to feel right living without you physically, but by my side. But I know your spirit will always be there by my side. I know you'll want me to continue to be great in life because that's all we've ever wanted for each other. I love you always and forever. Your favorite cousin slash triplet, Mumu. You left us, grandson, without warning, not even a goodbye. I can't even seem to stop the questions. Why? I didn't see this coming. It hit us by surprise. Then you left for heaven. Now a big part of me died. You smacked. Your smile could have brightened anyone's day, no matter what they were going through. And every day for the rest of my life, I will be missing you. I love you. Your grandmother, as you would say, your granny mom. My favorite cousin. I honestly thought we had more time, more vacations to take, more memories to make. But God had other plans for you. It has always been you, me, and Mumu doing everything together. It just won't seem right without you but I know your spirit will always be with us. You are more than just a cousin. You are my brother, my best friend, and someone who would defend me when I'm not around. We'd always tell, tell each other, I love you, and made sure that I was include, included because that was the most important part. Your heart was so pure, and I loved you for that. I'm going to miss you. The phone calls, visits, our cousin dates, you're forever free. Get your rest and save me a spot next to you. Love your favorite cousin, Apple. God gave me a smart, intelligent, and handsome nephew named Daryl, Daryl Smith, or as we affectionately known him as D. 
I was blessed to be able to grow closer to him before his passing. Dee would call me every day, sometimes several times a day, just to talk or vent. Before he would end his call, he would always make sure he, he tells, we sure he tell me he loves and uh, vice versa. I really enjoyed those calls and I always miss those calls tremend tremendously. D was always honest, honest and respectful with me. I never had to question his loyalty to me or my family. D was always there for anybody at any given moment. I would cherish those conversations with all my heart. Until we meet again, D, I want you to know that I always love you, your Aunt Darlene. kind of hard um, 23 years ago God loaned our family an angel named Daryl Antoine Smith jr. also known as Lil D fat fat lumberjack mr. president he had a lot of names because he was a different kind of special to everybody that knew him Lil D as I called him lived his life with so much passion purpose and meaning and he had a smile so bright that it could take the place of the sun. And so much love that it could fill a room. Matter of fact, it filled this room. Because everybody in here loved him for different reasons. Not too many people could take over a room the way he could with such a wonderful, charismatic personality that made everybody fall in love with the warm, loving gentleman that my nephew was. There was nothing more important to Lil D than taking care of and making sure his family and friends were okay, especially his mother and brothers who he looked after as if they were his own children. He was such an intelligent go-getter who never believed in the word can't because in his mind, he could do anything or make anything happen, and he often did. And that's why in his short 23 years on this earth, he had about 46 years of life experience. As he had, as everybody know, he had about eight cars, seven apartments, and he lived in about three to four different states already. Nothing could hold him down. This young man was amazing. Since a kid, he was everywhere doing everything and making an impact on everybody that came into contact with him. Lil D loved all of the kids. He had a special bond with every kid in the family and had a few with him at all times because as an angel, he wanted to make sure that he made an impact on the lives of God's small angels. And he definitely did because they all loved him dearly. We are gonna miss you Lil D. Walking in the room with that big smile, that little t-shirt, <laughs> those big shoes, and them skinny jeans with the two front pockets stuffed with two phones in one and 40 keys like a janitor in the other one. <laughs> but the thing we never noticed was that the reason he carried those keys around so proud was because he was showing everybody that he already had his key to heaven. And we just never realized it. Lil D never wanted anybody to be sad, nobody. So let's all smile and celebrate because where he where he always because he's where he always knew he was going to be right beside his king. So everybody stand up. One second, stand up. And everybody give a big round of applause to show Lil D how much we appreciate his impact on all of our lives and how much we love and miss him. And let's all ask him to look over us as we live the rest of our days on this earth, praying to get to where he is one day. We love you, Lil D. Rest in paradise. Amen, amen. Thank you, thank you. And thank all of those of you who gave a tribute to Mr. President. Can we say amen for him again? Amen. Such a young man. 
Mama, I want to ask you a question. Why is it that our sons, once they get a certain age, they become our husbands? <laughs> My son was like that too. I said, I, I made it before you got here. But we praise God for your son. Let's, let's give Mr. President another hand. And you too, Dad. You too. We will have a musical selection now by Mr. Isaac Roseborough and Company. Followed the musical selection. The next uh, speaking voice you will hear of the proud pastor of the Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church and the pastor of Mr. President, uh, our very own uh, Reverend Reginald Wayne Sharp, Jr. Let's say amen. Amen. Bible says in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, to trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding, and that all thy ways acknowledge in me will direct our path. So I pray that he will direct all of our paths today and give us peace. Amen. I 
I will put my whole trust in you, Lord. And I won't believe in nobody but you. I will put trust in you. did not create me to a you did not create me to fear. You created me to worship daily. So I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it all right here. My hands are raised because I surrender. Yeah. I believe your word is true. I bow to you because you're Jehovah Jireh and this is what I'm gonna do say I will trust, I will trust in you Lord in you, nobody but you Lord. Jesus I, will trust I give it all to you gotta trust in you, you. you're the Lord. only one who can I mend my broken heart say man say man again say man one more time if you know that in spite of the heaviness of this day that God is still great and greatly to be praised can you give God some praise in this house for being a faithful God come on redirect your attention beyond the hills from whence come of your help come on let's fill this atmosphere with praise and worship He's still Jehovah Jireh, the God that provides. He's still El Elyon, the most high God. Somebody just take a few minutes and tell God thank you. Come on, thank him for his strength. Thank him for his provisions. Thank him for his peace. Thank him for his power. Thank him that he will never leave you nor forsake you. He took care of Daryl. He's going to take care of his mama. He's going to take care of his daddy. He's the only wise God. Let the men praise him. Let the women praise him. Let the young people praise him. Let everything that has breath praise the name of the Lord. We thank God. We thank God. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Y'all help me. Just want to tell you I like that atmosphere. Lord, I love you more. Come on, come on, come on. Give it everything you got. Give it everything you got. Give it everything you got. Come on, sing it. I love you, Jesus. I worship that. Just want to tell you. Lord, I love you. More. Can anybody lift those hands for the next 30 seconds and sing it with me? Come on and say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. That's how you're going to make it through this season. I worship. I worship and you. Just want to tell you. Just want you tell me. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Come on, all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord. Come on, one more time. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. That's how you get through hard moments. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you. Just want to tell you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Oh. And Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me. That's love. Come on. That's love. 
Come on, come on, come on. We're in worship. Jesus went to Calvary to save a wreck like you and me. That's love, that's love. One Friday afternoon, they hung him high. Stretched him wide. He hung his head. For me, he died. That's the gospel. Come on, that's love. Come on, everybody in the room, just say they hung him high. Stretched him wide. He hung his head. For me, he died. Isn't that good news? That's love. So glad he loved me. So glad he loved me. But that's not how the story is. The story is. In three days, he rose again. Somebody give God praise that he loves us. He loves us. He loved Daryl. He loves us. And he's promised to be with us even unto the end of the world. Tell the person beside you, it's a heavy day, but God still loves you. Tell the other person, it's a heavy day, but God still loves you. We salute a young prince today. We salute a young leader today. And there's no need to pretend there's heaviness on all of us in this room because we would wish to be anywhere else in the world except here laying to rest a young man who represented greatness, a young man who represented resilience. And in a world filled with so many young idiots, I'm glad that we're not here because he died to violence. He died because he was in the streets. Come on, we salute a real prince today. A young man filled with greatness and education and love and compassion. Considerate, respectful, nurturing, loving. That's who we celebrate today. And it makes me proud to know that there's still young men out here who represent God well in the earth. Amen. Still young men that love their families, take care of their mamas, and look out for the siblings, and love and respect their grandparents. I'm, I'm proud of Daryl's life. And even before I get into the eulogy, which won't be long, I need to tell you what matters is not the quantity of your days, but the quality of your days. And you can live a short life and have a large impact. Alexander the Great only, only lived to 33 years old. Malcolm X and Martin Luther King Jr. only lived to 39 years old. Biggie only lived to 25. Tupac only lived to 25. Nipsey Hussle only lived to 33. Daryl only lived to 23. But it is not about how long you live. It's about the impact that you make. Can we thank God for an impactful life? Even though it was brief. It has been beautiful. And I want to talk to all the young people in here. Stop wasting your life. Nobody's promised that you're going to live to be 70 years old. Nobody's promised you you're going to live to be 80 years old. But with the time that you live, have you given your life to Jesus? Are you trying to live a meaningful life so that if your time comes, I'm 31. Uh, Daryl could have been my little brother. But if my time comes even now. You know, Pastor, I just want somebody to be able to say he tried to help somebody. He did not live a selfish life. High every day, drunk every day, in drama on Facebook every day, huh? Always in mess and always in a situation acting goofy. I, I, I hope somebody can say it was a good young man who tried to make a difference. Because we can definitely say that about this king, this young prince we honor today. Daryl Antoine Smith Jr. Y'all help give God praise one more time for his life. 
Alicia, Daryl Sr., I'm praying for you, all of these siblings. I'm praying for you. The Fellowship family are here. Some of our deacons and ministers, our ushers, our music ministry, our media ministry are here. I thank God for Reverend Jonathan Brooks, and I thank God for Pastor Christopher Farrell. Can you help me thank God for these men of God? I appreciate you all and the way you love on our community. It's a genuine love, and everybody in Chicago knows it. And so I respect you, and I thank God for your presence. Help me thank God for Dr. Carolyn Walker, our officiant today. Thank God for you. Ironically, before I saw the program, Miss Alicia, on my way here, God confirmed what I needed to say. And the scripture that God gave me at the crib is the scripture on the front of the program. I said, the Lord knows how to put that thing together, doesn't he? Yea, though I walk through the valley. Somebody say valley. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me, for God is with me. Your rod and your staff, come on, they comfort me. I want to talk today from this thought very simply for about five minutes. The Valley Academy. The Valley Academy. Tell the person beside you whether you know it or not. Yeah, you got to talk to them, actually. You got to actually talk to them. The person beside you, you got to actually use your mouth and talk to them. Tell them whether you know it or not. We're all in the Valley Academy. Daryl did not just attend the urban prep school. Daryl did not just attend Henderson Elementary. Daryl did not just attend Jackson State. Fat Fat was also enrolled in the Valley Academy. But not just him. Everybody in this room will spend some time in the Valley Academy. I need to tell you on the forefront of this message that the classes are always rigorous in the Valley Academy because you're going to meet Professor Payne and Dr. Disappointment. You're going to have to deal with a curriculum that is rigorous in the Valley Academy. It is a shadow of death hovering over the Valley Academy. There are difficult days in the Valley Academy. You're going to have some fierce frustrations in the Valley Academy. You're going to have some stark struggles in the Valley Academy. And here's the truth. You don't get to decide which classes you take during the semester. The classes are already determined for you by the dean of the school. You, you have to enroll and endure Valley Academy. Daryl knew all about the Valley Academy, but one thing that helped Daryl endure and helps me endure and will help you endure the Valley Academy is there are already so many notable alumni that have already come through the school. Moses wanted me to tell you he's an alumni of the school. Moses is a part of the alumni association of the Valley Academy. Moses said I had to pass the class on Red Sea Crossing. It was a sea in in front of me that I could not get around I could not get through but God had to make no a, a highway out of no way and take me places that I could not open for myself David wanted me to tell you he is a part of the alumni association of the Valley Academy and David wanted me to tell you even when you have to face a giant that is bigger than you that giant is never bigger than God yeah Joshua wanted me to tell you he's a part of the alumni association of the Valley Academy Joshua who had to succeed after the leadership of Moses there was a wall called Jericho that he could not get through but he walked around the wall with the people of Israel seven times and on the seventh time he released a shout and the trumpets and God made the wall fall I'm here to tell you that even when something is difficult in front of you that you can't knock down you and I have a God that'll knock it down for you. Esther is an alumni, alumni of the Valley Academy and she was born for such a time as this. She had to free her people from the evil of Persian captivity. I'm trying to tell you, Peter is a part of the alumni association. Peter had to step out of the boat and walk on the water and God transformed the liquidity of the water into a solid concrete sidewalk. Only God can make something that 
that would sink you something that you can stand on. I'm trying to tell you that there are people who've already been where you're trying to go and here's what they're trying to tell you. If God kept them, God can keep you. Can I talk to some of the older folks in the room who've already had enemies, already faced pains, already had some bad days? Can some of the older seasoned folks in the room wave at me and testify I've been in the Valley Academy and I know this if God kept me God can keep the young people that are going through the Valley Academy right now it's a rigorous program in the Valley Academy it's, it's some alumni that have already graduated that we've got to look at and be inspired by but can I give you another one there's some lessons that you've got to learn in the Valley Academy the text says David writes yea though I walk through the valley the first lesson is a lesson on pace somebody say pace it's a lesson on pace David said yea though I walk through the valley it didn't say yea though I run it did not say yea though I sit it did not say yea though I give up it did not say yea though I go to the gas station and buy a cigarillo and take that out of it so I can put some stronger in it and lick it back together and get high in the valley it did not say yea though I turn up on Casamigos or tequila yeah or brown or some light liquor in the valley David said yea though I walk in the valley there are two things he didn't say he said I did not say I quit and it did not say I'm a run because the worst two things you could do in the valley academy is quit when it gets difficult and try to rush through everything that you go through tell the person beside you you got to pace yourself through this Miss Alicia Daryl Senior siblings grandma great grandmama loved ones friends you got to pace yourself through this season you got to walk yourself through this season you can't rush through it and you can't quit through it are y'all awake you can't rush through it and you can't quit through it you can't rush through it and you can't quit through it you gotta walk through this you gotta pace yourself through this you gotta take your time and trust God through this watch this because there's some lessons in your loneliness there's some sermons in your sleeplessness there's some a gospel in the garbage there's some gifts in the grief there's some treasure in the trash there's some sapphires in your struggles there's some diamonds in your disasters there's some jewels in the junk there's some revelations in your ruins I'm trying to tell you if you just walk through the valley you will discover something you will discover it's not death over you it's the shadow of death and wherever there is a shadow light has to be shining from somewhere so when you're walking through this either you focus on the shadow or you thank God that in the midst of this dark situation God still knows how to bring light to light up my time in the valley of Ca is there anybody around here I know this is a celebration of life can anybody thank God for light in a dark place can anybody thank God that God will still show up and make ugly places beautiful rough places smooth and difficult places easier you gotta pace yourself through this but there's not just a lesson on pace there's a lesson of peace yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death come here I will fear no evil because God is with me oh I wish y'all would wake up your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Can I tell you why there's peace? Because I've got a visitor with me in the valley who's going to hook me up with a rod and a staff. God is going to give me the rod and a staff. Do you know the difference in a rod and a staff? A rod keeps the predators away and keeps anybody trying to harm you away from you. Uh, but the staff keeps you from you to sleep uh huh yeah, yeah, this is, a, this is an analogy of a shepherd and a sheep and there are predators after the sheep wolves and tigers and bears oh my and you got a shepherd down in the valley who has a rod that says when you try to mess with my child I'm not going to allow it because I'm going to keep them in perfect peace 
And somebody around here ought to thank God that all of Daryl's life, God had a rod that kept his enemies away, kept drama away, kept mess away. While folks are dying in Chicago from bullets and gang violence, God's rod kept all of that away from Daryl Smith. But you also ought to thank God for the staff because sometimes the sheep get silly and they mess up their own lives because they start, they start wandering off looking and thinking that the grass is green on the other side and they can mess around and fall into the ravine or the river and because the sheep's wool is so thick that if it falls in the river, it can't save itself. So the shepherd has to get the staff that has a hook in it to wrap around the sheep's neck to pull it back to safety. Because sometimes your biggest enemy is your inner me. And God has to keep you from you just to keep you at peace. I'm trying to help somebody. If you really embrace the Valley Academy, there's some lessons. There's a lesson of pace. There's a lesson of peace. But can I tell you what else is happening in the Valley Academy as I finish? There's an advisor there. Anybody going through college, I hear some Jackson States in the room, you have an academic advisor who helps you navigate through rough classes. Well, who is David's advisor? Who was Daryl's advisor? Who is your advisor? I'm so glad you asked because we started reading in verse 4, but you got to moonwalk back to verse 1. And I tell you who the advisor is. The Lord is my shepherd. And I'm here to tell you, I don't care how young you are, how discouraged you are. If you let the Lord be your academic advisor, there will be things you will be able to conquer that even you didn't think you could get through. Is there anybody here? I don't care if you're 15 or 50. Can you give God praise for being your advisor? The Bible says he's with me. He walks with me. He talks with me. He comforts me. He shields me. And can anybody thank God? He's been your advisor. And when it got dark, he made it better. And when it got heavy, he made it lighter. When the road got rough, he smoothed it out for you. And all of the attributes we keep lifting about Daryl, it's because he trusted his academic advisor at the Valley Academy. All he's doing is acting like his daddy. You know how we are. Sometimes you see your son and you say, you looking just like your daddy. Daryl, your whole life you look just like your daddy. I'm not talking about your earthly daddy now. I'm talking about Yahweh. I'm talking about the most high God. God was a giver. You were a giver. God is a keeper. You were a keeper. God was wise. He was wise. Anybody glad he looks like his advisor? And your job, young man, young woman, is to listen to your advisor so well that you start looking like God. And when you show up to the room, peace shows up. When you show up to the room, love shows up. When you show up to the room, wisdom shows up. I can't just leave y'all like this because I'm, I'm dropping some heavy stuff. Because some of y'all saying, I ain't know I was in the Valley Academy, but that explains why life has been feeling like this. Because I've been dealing with some rigorous classes. I'm learning a lesson on pace. I'm learning a lesson on peace. I'm trying to relearn how to trust my academic advisor. But can I tell you why you can endure it? Because graduation is coming. And I got an announcement to y'all. We're not at a funeral today. We're at a graduation. Because when you pass your classes... When you trust your academic advisor, when you finish paying attention to Dr. Disappointment and Professor Payne, when you get through going through all the semesters and courses and classes that you have to take in the Valley Academy, one day you're going to hear some music called Pumping Circumstance. And you already know what that is. You're going to be able to put your robe on and put your hat on. And walk proudly knowing that when you graduate, you're not staying where you are. You get to go higher. And I'm so proud that just a few days ago, God said, I'm so proud of you, Daryl Smith. I'm so proud of you, fat, fat, little deep, Mr. President. I'm so proud of you. It's time for your graduation. And I don't know about y'all, but is there anybody glad that if I keep on trusting Jesus, one day, like Daryl, I'll be able to graduate. And I can graduate from the land of some more to the land of no more. Do you know where the land of some more is? Right down here is the land of some more. You're going to have some haters down here and you're going to have some more. 
We're going to have to fight monkeypox down here and we're going to have to fight some more. We happy to be out of masks, but I believe we're going to have to wear them some more. It's the land of some more down here. You're going to have weight down here. You're going to have pressure down here. You're going to have bad days down here and you're going to have some more. But if you keep listening to your academic advisor, one of these old days, I get happy all by myself. Just keep sitting there like y'all don't understand what I'm saying. One of these old days, the music of pumping circumstance is going to play. God is going to put a new robe on me. Put my graduation crown on me. And I'm going to the land of no more. I know we're going to miss Daryl down here. But can you rejoice that he's been promoted to the land of no more? No more what? No more tears. No more enemies. No more politics. No more sickness. No more asthma. No more breathing complications. No more financial stress. Can somebody put your hands together and thank God that if I keep being faithful, I'm going to make it to my graduation. I said open your mouth and praise God for your graduation. We at his today, but one day your time is coming. Let's pray God. And so Dun 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 Don't y'all act like you don't know this song. You better hum with me. You've been faithful over a few things. Go on up and become ruler over many. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. It's your graduation day, Daryl. You've been through the Valley Academy. And on behalf of the students and faculty of the Valley Academy, along with your entire family and community, you may now switch your tassel. You've moved from pain to pleasure. You've moved from earth to heaven. You've moved from labor to reward. Can somebody give God praise that Daryl has made it where we're all trying to go? Lift your hands to the Lord because the truth is he made it, but some of us are still in the valley, in Valley Academy. But I want to lift you to the Lord today, especially this family. May God give you peace. May that same God that walked with Daryl through the Valley Academy walk with you. God, cover this family. Give them strength. Sometimes the way gets dark. Sometimes the tears won't stop shedding. Sometimes our heart is broken into pieces. I lift, to the, I lift these siblings to you. God, they need you. I can see the pain on their face to lose a brother that loved them so much. God, be their peace. And may they become the young men that will make Daryl proud to be called their brother. May they be the siblings that represent his legacy. I pray even for his grandparents. Who wants to bury a grandson? I pray that you give them peace. These aunts, these uncles, this pastor, this entire community of Inglewood in Chicago. God, we need you. We're all enrolled in this Valley Academy from the pulpit to the back door. doesn't matter. But thank you for Jesus, who is our chief shepherd and our academic advisor. Lord, one day we want to be so faithful that we can get our diploma, get our crown, and get our robe and enjoy the graduation that Daryl has enjoyed just a few days ago. Thank you for your presence that will never leave us. These and all other blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. Amen and amen. Come on, let's give God praise for Daryl's graduation.
You know, I don't do this often, but if you don't know Jesus Christ and you want to accept him today because you know that you need to rethink some things. You need to set your life up in a way that if you leave like Daryl, at least we don't have to stand up here and wonder where you're going. If you want to get your business straight today, no fashion, no form, and everybody stop walking for a minute. This is the most walkingest funeral I've ever been to. Walking across the front, you know, we got to have some order. Amen. Somebody say order. Do things decent and in order. We ain't that busy, are we? Can we be still for just a second? I'm from Georgia. That's what they say. Just a second. Just a second. Somebody may need to accept Jesus Christ in your life, and I don't want to be a distraction. That's the only reason why I'm stopping you other than that. You can walk all over. But I want to be paused. I want to pause and think. Because somebody may need to say, hey, Sharp, listen. I'm in Valley Academy, and it is hard. But if Daryl could make it and live a life that was meaningful, I want the same Savior that he had. And if you want to come today, no, I'm not going to beg you to come. But just come on, come on, come on. Shake my hand. Give God your heart. Come on, shake my hand and give God your heart. Come on, shake my hand and give God your heart. Come on. Come on, come on. Y'all give her a hand for coming. Come on, come on. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Come on. God bless you. You can stand right here. Stand right here. God bless you. God bless you. Come on, come on. God bless you. Y'all come stand right here. Stand right here. If you came down, stand right here. Stand right here. Let me get some of my deacons to help me. Let me get. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Come on, shake my hand. Shake my hand. Shake my hand. Lord, have mercy. Isn't God wonderful? Wow. Y'all come stand right here. Come stand right here. Come stand right here. I told you only God can let light shine in a dark place. That's what's happening today. God bless. See, you almost walked away. You <laughs> bless you, bless you, bless you. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Bless you, bless you, bless you. You bringing her? Amen, amen. She came herself. That's what I'm talking about. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Y'all stand right here, right here, right here. Come on, somebody give God praise for all these lives that have come. Listen, if you came, come on, stay with me, stay with me. If you came down, stay with me. Here's what I want you to do. I'm, I'm about to walk you through the steps of salvation. It's so simple. I'm, I thank God it is. And so this is the easiest class you're going to take in the Valley Academy. This is simple as A, B, C. One, two, three. I want y'all to pause for just a minute. Everybody looking at me. Looking at me and repeat after me because this is the prayer of salvation. I know they gave you a sheet of paper, but just look right here at me. Look right here at me. Look right here at me just for a second. Look right here at me. Repeat after me. This is the prayer of salvation. Once you pray this prayer, according to the Bible, you're saved. So let's pray it together. And if you're in the room and you say, I wanted to walk, but I don't like all these people. I don't do crowds. Well, you can repeat it right here. And today you can be saved. Repeat after me. Dear God, I admit I'm a sinner. I've made mistakes. I'm doing my best in the Valley Academy. But today I accept Jesus Christ as my Savior and my advisor. I confess he is Lord to the glory of God. Have your way in my life. Walk with me. Help me grow. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's clap our hands and thank God for salvation. Let's thank God. Come on, we can do better than that. One, two, three, four. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Come on, we thank God. I counted you. We thank God. And and our church is gonna stay in contact with you so I can baptize you. And if you say, hey, I just wanted to accept Jesus today. And I want my heart and my life to be clear. And even if you want to go to another church, you have two churches represented here. And I don't care where you go. It ain't about membership. It's about relationship. So, but make sure you go tell the pastor you're going to, hey, I accepted Christ on Friday. And I want to be baptized. But if you're interested in being baptized right here at Fellowship, it'll be our pleasure to connect with you. And we have connect cards right here. Connect cards right here. Raise your hand if you would like one. Please fill it out and give it to our deacons. Go ahead. Go ahead and fill it out. Go ahead. Take your time and fill it out. Here's a pen right here. Isn't God wonderful? 
even at a funeral, people can get saved. Come on. Even at a funeral, if somebody has some pens, would you be so helpful to bring some pens up? Anybody, any of my sisters, any of my brothers, some need a pen as we connect with them. Hand those cards right here. Hand those cards right here so we can stay connected with you. If that's, can we thank God that some of Daryl's brothers came down today? Come on. This is beautiful. Everybody got a pen? And sisters. God bless you. Brothers and, and aunties. Go ahead and fill it out. Go ahead and fill it out. Go ahead and fill it out. Amen, amen, amen. We're not wasting time today. This is worth it, isn't it? This is worth it. This is worth it. This is worth it. This is worth it. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We're going to connect. Did you get a connect card? Did you fill it out? You got it? You can turn it in. Once you fill it out, and, and you can turn it in, and you can return to your seat, and we'll be in contact with you once you give us your connect card. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Bless you, bless you. Yes, Jesus loves me, for the Bible tells me so. Only God can do something like this. Yes, Jesus loves me. Everybody say it. Yes, Jesus loves me. Alicia, you ought to be so proud. Yes, you ought to be so proud, brother. Loves me for the Bible tells me so. I'm praying for you all. Praying for you. I'm praying for you. Yes, Jesus loves me. Oh, yes, Jesus loves me. You all may be seated. came today. Yeah, come on. Jesus loves me. Thank you. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. As the funeral directors come at this time would everybody stand would everyone stand those who have been asked to be flower bearers if you would come at this time we have some flowers that we need you to help us with those of you who are flower bearers would you come I need some cousins and some friends to come and help us with the flowers Yes, Jesus. Thank you, sir. Love me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. Thank you, flower bearers. If you will follow down this aisle. Anybody going to keep going through the Valley Academy? Anybody going to stay faithful in the Valley Academy? Keep on, keep on, keep on keeping on. Keep on keeping on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Bless you. Amen. Our ministers and our deacons will follow and then the family will follow. I ask that you don't move until the family recesses. Thank you, pastors. Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. Yes, he loves me. Jesus loves me. 
Yes, Jesus loves me. 